Hi everyone, this is David, and in this video you're going to learn everything you need to know about APA to do your paper. We're going to take a look at how to format your pages in APA, how to either quote from a source or paraphrase from the source, the only two ways that you can use a source, and then how to cite those paraphrases and quotes with in-text citations and reference citations. Everything that you need to know in the next 12 minutes. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is to format our page. We're going to go to the Layout tab and then over to the Margins tab on the left. Click in that drop-down arrow and select Normal to put a one-inch margin on all sides of your paper. And once you're done with that, you have set all the margins for your paper. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is to set up our font and type size. So go up to Home, and then after Home, click on the Font dialog box larger arrow. In this box, you want to select your default font. As you know, Calibri is the default font for Word, and Calibri is fine. APA says you can also select other accessible fonts, and those include Arial, 11 or 12 point, and also Times New Roman at 12 point only. Now, once you've selected your font, be sure to click on Regular in addition to your font and type size. Now go down to default in the bottom left and clicking in that radio button will mean that these settings will be saved for all of your papers whenever you open up a Word document. Okay, time to put in some page numbers. Go to Insert tab, then all the way over to Page Number, drop down arrow, and select Top of Page. Then pull down of your options there and select plain number three, and that will put a page number in the top right-hand portion of your page up in the header area. Now, that page number is going to be in Calibri because that's the Word's default font. You have to make sure that whatever font that page number is in, that page number has to agree in its font with any other font that you selected. Everything in your paper must be in one font. Now, to exit the header area, click on the Word header or anywhere in the body of the document. Now it's time to fill out the rest of your title page. First thing you want to do is to move your cursor down to the bottom top third. That's about the one inch marker on that ruler on the left. Once you've got your cursor down there, next thing you want to do is to go up to the Home tab and then over to Center Alignment. Once you've got Center Alignment set, don't leave. You're going to go over to the Line Spacing tool and select 2.0 for double spacing. Now you've got your spacing set, but don't leave yet. Go back up to the Line Spacing tool. And this time, select Remove Space After Paragraph if it is not grayed out. If it is grayed out, you're good to go. Now, type in your title. Be sure to use Title Capitalization. That means you capitalize all words except prepositions and articles that are fewer than four letters. But also be sure to capitalize any first or last word of a title, no matter what they are. Okay, next, let's highlight that title, go up to Home, and then click on B for boldfacing. All titles in APA are boldfaced. Hit Enter one time to get double spacing. Go back up to Home, click on B again to turn off bold facing. Type in your full name, including a middle initial if you want. Then the name of the course and number of the course, followed by a colon, one space, and then the full title of the course, Introduction to Criminal Justice. Hit Enter one time to get double spacing. And this time you're going to put in the name of your teacher. And you could use honorifics if you want, doctor, instructor, professor, whatever. And then underneath that, hit enter one time and put in the due date for the paper. Okay, that's it for the title page. Now what we want to do is to go up to Insert tab, click, and then the Pages grouping. And there select Page Break. And that puts us on the first body page of our paper. You will note that Word in the upper right corner is now numbering our pages automatically. Next, let's go to the Home tab, then over to Center Alignment, because now we're going to retype our main title, then we're going to highlight it and boldface it. Back down at the title, hit Enter one time to add double spacing. 
back up to B to turn off bowl phasing. And this time we're going to go to left align to begin typing our paper. Paragraphs in APA are indented one half inch. So all you need to do is to tap the tab key one time and that takes it out to a half inch for the indentation. Time to type in your first body paragraph. Go ahead and type it in and as you do be sure not to hit enter at the end of a line. The only place you want to use enter is at the end of a paragraph to begin a new paragraph. APA really wants you to use subtitles or subheadings to divide the major sections of your paper. So to enter a level one subheading, go down below your first paragraph, hit center alignment, and then type in the next title, subtitle, subheading, whatever you want to call it. But it follows the same rules as your main title. In other words, you use title capitalization. You also highlight it. You also go up to B for bold facing. Hit enter to get your double spacing. Be sure to turn off bold facing. And now we can hit left align and continue with the second paragraph or second section of our paper, being sure to indent it one half inch. Okay, let's talk about the two types of APA citations. The first one is called the parenthetical in-text citation. That's where the author's name and publication information are within the parentheses that come at the end of the sentence, before the sentence period. The next type is the narrative in-text citation. In the narrative in-text citation, the author's last name, or maybe even something about the author, are a part of the sentence. So the only information within the parentheses is the date of publication. Regardless of which type that you use, both refer to a reference citation on the last page of your paper. Okay, let's talk about using sources in APA. There are only two ways that you can use a source in any research paper. One is to quote from it, verbatim, putting the quoted words in quotation marks. And the other is to paraphrase. That's where you more or less put that same quote in your own words. Regardless of whether you quote from the source or whether you paraphrase the source, you always must cite the source, whether it is a quotation or a paraphrase. Okay, let's dig a little bit deeper into citations. Let's go first with how to cite a quotation. The first thing you want to do is to be sure to introduce the quotation with what's called a signal phrase. Oncologist S. Graham writes colon. So that introduces or sets off our direct quotation. And then comes the direct quotation verbatim set off with quote marks. And whenever you use a quotation in an APA paper, it must have a page number. So here we see page number 61. Page here is singular. So we're seeing only the P. That's the abbreviation followed by a period, followed by a space, followed by the actual page number. When you have multiple pages, you use PP followed by a period, a space, the page range with a hyphen in between them. There is no space before or after that hyphen indicating the page range. If there is no page number, count the paragraphs from the beginning of the article to whenever you arrive. The paragraph that contains the quote that you're using, and that is the number that you use preceded by the abbreviation para dot. In-text citations for a paraphrase. First, a paraphrase is simply taking that quote and putting it as much in your own words as you can, knowing that you're going to have to repeat certain words. For example, here's the original from Sarah Graham that we've already read. Now notice the paraphrase of that original. Although the public perception is that breast cancer is the number one killer of women, the reality is that more women die of lung cancer. You will also note that during that paraphrase, key words have to be repeated. How else do you say breast cancer, women, or lung cancer? You must repeat key words whenever doing your paraphrases. Another thing about in-text citations for paraphrases, a page number is optional, although you might want to use one for the convenience of your reader. 
Okay, our next topic is the block quotation. Any quotation longer than 40 words must use the block quote format. Here's how you do it. First, you place a colon at the end of the sentence introducing the quotation. Then you simply type in your quotation, but then you highlight that entire quotation, go up to the home menu, and then over to increase indent, and tap that increase indent one time, and that gives you the little hanging indention that you need. Now note that for block quotations, there are no quote marks, and as a result, there is no period after that parentheses that contains the in-text citation. Excuse me, Professor Taylor, what about references? They go on the last page, a new page, at the end of your paper. So let's click on Insert, and then after Insert, we're going to go to Pages, and then Insert a Page Break. And that gives us the new page on which we can place our references. Let's click on Home again, and we have to center align our subtitle here, and our subtitle is simply the word references. Type in the word references, and it is plural by the way. Highlight it. Go up to the home grouping. Click on B for bold face. Come back down to references. Hit enter to get your double spacing. Go back up and be sure to turn off bold facing. Now go over to the alignment grouping, and you want to this time click on align left. Your references are aligned left, just like the text of your paper. Type in your references using double spacing. And, of course, make sure that they are in alphabetical order. So, let's take a look at a general format for the most common type of citation, the periodical citation. What comes first is the author name. The author can be an individual or individuals. It can also be a corporate author or a committee author. Next comes the publication date. Year in parentheses has a period on the left and a period on the right. After the year comes the article title. APA is very different in that the article title uses what is called sentence capitalization. In other words, that title of that article, whatever the source is, is punctuated and capitalized just like a sentence. Look at this example. Capital P, prisons do not reduce crime, colon. That's your main title. High, capital H, cost of ignoring the science. That's your subtitle. So any title, whether it's a main title or a subtitle, the first word is capitalized and any proper noun, and that's it. No other words are capitalized, and it ends with a period. The periodical information consists of the title, and that uses regular title capitalization. The title is also put in italics, as well as the volume number. Here you see the prison journal, comma, volume 101. And then the issue number, if there is one, is placed in parentheses. Comma, that is followed by the page range. And again, it's different for reference citations. There is no P or PP, followed by a period. After the periodical information, retrieval information for that periodical, and that consists of a DOI. And if you don't have a DOI, use the URL. And neither one is followed by a period because it's a URL that comes at the end. Okay, our last topic is hanging indentation. You've already seen one way of making hanging indentation. That's with the increase indent tool. I'm going to show you one more way and what you do for hanging indention is simply highlight all lines of the citation except the first one. And then go up to the hanging indent tool, click on it, and drag it over one half inch. And that gives you that half inch hanging indentation that all reference citations have. All right, thanks for watching. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will try to answer them within 24 hours or less. In the meantime, you might want to check out this APA playlist with all of my APA videos on it, in, including more of a deep dive into in-text citations and the use of sources in your APA paper.